that um, we need to react to. And we have few videos to go through, you understand? So please, as you are watching this video, I expect you to like the video. Click on the live video. Whenever you are going to watch the video, I want you to like and share. Tell us what you think about what we are going to discuss. So please and please wait to hear this from Raf Wazureke. And uh, I don't have the complete video that he made concerning the court case of Mazna Morikan today. And we are still going to go through some things that his lawyer said regarding the judgment, the injustice and wickedness from Nigerian judiciary system, from the executive legislation, all of them, all the arms of government in Nigeria, what they are, what they are doing and intention and the hatred on Igbo people is what we are going to see on this video. Disclaimer, we are not preaching for violence. I'm not here to castigate anybody. I'm actually trying to react to the news that is in public that everybody has access to. So I believe you, you can hear me. So if you can hear what I'm saying, please let me know as well. All right. The video you're about to watch is the one that, uh, what, 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 what Raf was like said, and PM shared this on his S handle. So I want you to listen to that. We'll be right back. Just wait for it. All right. Let's go there. Matter of fact, I doubt. No, 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 the procedure window dressing. I say, hey, I can meet after the general, means of justice, but I'm not okay. So you should know that. I'd love to continue with the case. Okay, see you, Mayor. If you want to go to Europe, you can go to the European Union. You can go to the European Union. You can go to the President. Say, son, you can go to the Konda Osadara. You can go to the leader. You can go to the leader. You can go to the leader. Fine. Of course. As a people, see the reason and they can help because I will run a governor here in the southeast. And when somebody for him, see, based on the video name, see, I talk about Canada reporter that's him now. Be chief now, don't I consider that I'm going to get a national security advisor. Masia, him to tell me, I'm going to get I want the relevant authorities who like it from ahead of all the southeast governors, and the chief security officers of the state in the southeast, and the security report on the southeast. I remember in uh, 2013-14, the national security advisor invited me, Sambo Dasuki. All through one of the security uh, uh, gurus in, in, in Igbo land who used to reach me, I went. When I had discussed, so we had stormy discussion, we had relevant discussion, last for hours about the southeast. Our uh, name, Taiga, maybe the petition. See the list. I want. I got you certain questions. You have to convince him why. Oh, is it possible not to make we you have to convince him. You have to convince him. You have to convince these people. Security yeah, wise. All. You know, one thing we need to understand is that what he said here is, to me, is the truth. Because, you know, when the Southeast governors and the senators, the politicians, are acting as if they care, but deep down their mind, they don't care. They're actually working with, they're actually working with federal government and Nigerian states to keep Masana Khan in detention. And they have laid hands on many things these days. You know, lately, they have laid hands on many things, planning on how to stop the agitation by looking for PM. Their agenda, their focus, their strength is all about, you know, is on PM, Masana Khan, to stop him, because they know that he's the one that's giving them concern. You know, that they're talking about Masana Khan today is because of activities of the government in Israel under Mazi Samaneba. So the activity of the federal government is, uh, is what is pushing them. And they are trying to weigh the better option for them to choose. That is why everybody is talking. Release Mazi Samanekan, release Mazi Samanekan. We are going to hear the worst that happened today. All right? Mazi Samanekan's lawyer, um, Aloy Jimako, you know, 
he says something very, very bad, very, very bad for Biafrans and for Mazen and American. You know, not that he committed anything bad. Understand what I'm saying? Because I don't want to misunderstand quote what I'm trying to say. The press release that he, 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 he made today, you know, on that press release, on that press release, he said something very, very interesting. That today, DSS refused to allow lawyers to enter, you know, the courtroom. They're trying to, you know, reduce the number of people that will be in the courtroom. Maybe because we are, you know, we are happy that Master can have freedom in the court. We can see how lively the court sometimes how lively the thing the court courtroom is and the uh, Mazan Kamri Kanan you know talk and face camera and address pub the public. Maybe they allowed they allowed him to do those things because they were waiting for him to say something against PM and reference and reference. And he did not say that. So they are not trying to restrict him that like the way they normally do before. Are you guessing what I'm guessing? I'm not saying that this, what I'm saying is verified, but this is what my own observation and my own take. Because people have questioned the uh, DOS and Nigerian IP, IPB Nigerians and the former lawyers that Mazakan sacked. Why was it that Mazakan was not able to talk to address people in the, in the courtroom? And now that a lawyer is my court is the one in you know, the affairs of the of legal, his legal team, this looks so totally different. Okay. Maybe these people have gone to Nigerian, the people that paid them, and tell them, look, people are now trying to, you know, find out our business with you, that this is what is going, what, this is what is going on now, to compare what was happening under the former lawyers. And they're not trying to, you know, use that kind of style to drag Mazan Makanos and, and his lawyers back to square one. You may not understand what I'm saying because we're going to watch the video after this. Okay, in this video, not after this, because then they, I want to I want to bring another video, you know, a ration of a black France after this. You are going to watch what a, a man, I don't even know his name, but he was interviewed by Nigerian TV, TV stations, and you are going to hear what he said. Then after we can then go through what the press release of Al Mamas Namakan's lawyer, a lawyer Jamaica. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. This is my own observation. People are questioning the US and former lawyers of Mazan Mekan that the one that he sacked. Why is it that now Mazan Mekan is able to talk to people, to face camera, to it? He's laughing, he's smiling. Now, what they did is this for you to know that they're working hand in hand. In the courtroom today, they refused the lawyers to enter court in the courtroom. What they did is this they avoid, you know, some lawyers they want to try to tell them how many lawyers that's going to you know represent Mazan Makan in the courtroom that they were allowed to enter. You know, they use DSS to do that. And they told them DSS they, they told them that law, judge, judge has not come, but before you, you enter courtroom, you more you people you have to enter maybe few people, few lawyers will enter. They were trying to negotiate with them without knowing that the judge have entered through back door. Nobody knows when she entered. And she entered the courtroom and ordered the security, court security, to sh sh shut the door against the entire lawyers of Mazda Modekan. And they were outside. They were trying to enter with some DSS. You know, DSS, act, they act as if they are, you know, kind of, they are not, uh, they are not among of the, they are, they are not planned, they are not, they are not in line or they are not part of the plan that the judge and federal government and our our people, people, you know what I mean by our people, people that we are suspect that they sold Mazan Mamad Khan, these are their plan. Because if not, why now? Why now judge have none trying to realize that allowing people, allow Mazan Khan to have that freedom, allowing him to, you know, face normal trials, you, you claim that he committed something, you have no case against him. Why is it now that you are trying to do those nonsense now? Why now? Like I said, I am not here to preach violence. I'm not here to support any violence or any any uh, any uh, problem at all or clear of any type. No, we are here to analyze the event that took place against Mas Namadukano 
from get-go, from the time they kidnapped from Kenya until this day. So the judge went on and tried to, you know, tried, he went on with his so, her own so-called trial, and now, without the, his national kind of representative, the judge conducted the whole thing by herself, and you know this kind of uh, a Banana Republic uh, trial that the Nigerian always want to do. In that court, in today's court, what she did is this: she ordered that Master Kano, he, she had joined the case on her own without asking lawyers any question, without nothing. They joined the case on the January next year. We are now in, 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 in July. Today is 8 July. Today is uh, 6 July, sorry. 6 July. All right? She, she, on her, she just had joined the case on her own until January next year. Now, let's count. This is July, August, September, October, November, December, January, next six months. Similar thing they normally do when a Jofo, the other lawyer, the former lawyers, you know, uh, we are, you know, conducting the affairs of Mazam Nukan, the name of a, a legal team and, uh, you know, attorney and whatever they call themselves. They are trying to prove to their friend that the, the same thing could happen to Mazam Nukan now. But we know that people, these people have gone to them and cried out to them that this is what people are trying to suspect about us. They are using, they are trying to, people are now comparing Mazam Nukan not now and before, his court case before and now. But one thing I want to tell us is this. Everything happened for a reason. Let's watch out and see the next step because this is to prove a testament to everybody that you are not welcome in Nigeria. What is going to Mazam, what is happening to Mazam Makan is so, so, so annoying, so, so, you know, bad, very, very bad to hear. Or let's see if you are not a human being. I am boring the way I am today. Now, like, in, in, you know, as I'm recording this video, my, my mind is filled with, you know, heavy i have a very heavy feelings i i am very very angry very very annoyed because of this thing because of the news that Allah Jibarko gave what happened in the court case today is an insult is a slap on our face and that is what was is talking about the so-called senators that are acting as if they are blind they don't know what they're doing just like what Ohana did few months ago, trying to go and beg for like people that they are sorry for what happened in 1967, in, in, before the, not happened, you know, the, before civil war, that the coup that took place, they call that Igbo coup. And those so elders, so those, those, those so-called uh, leaders today, they don't pay attention, they don't, they don't even read history, they don't even, they don't have any, they don't have not conducted any research whatsoever. These are the things that is going on and is happening to our people alone. Now listen to this, uh, our 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 brother here. This what just hear what he said concerning what happened to Martin Mukano, people going to his house to visit his home. Listen to this. I'll be right back. Now the question we should be asking is when they went to search Imam Jekano's house, what weapon did they find in that house? What is he being charged for? Are no, they stupid? That. The people that have been incited, are they stupid? We've had people say worse things in this country and nobody has arrested them. For me, this whole thing has become a political issue. No, Nigeria sure. has always been a country where there is selective justice, depending on who you know and what region you come from. But you see, when people say release Nam the colonel and they're saying the courts have granted him bail or whatever, we, we need to also put that in perspective. Now, when the appeal court discharged him and said he should be released, the first mistake the federal government did was not to have released him. Even if they were going to appeal that case, they should have released him. But they did not. They held him and they went to Supreme Court. It's based on the following. The warrant upon which Mazikan was arrested was issued by a federal high court in Abuja. Warrant of a federal high court in Nigeria is not valid for effecting an arrest in Kenya. Gano did not undergo extradition proceedings in Kenya. Extradition is a condition precedent to the accession, to the assumption of jurisdiction of a court over a fugitive suspect returned from overseas. So the condition precedent was not met. That's a challenge to jurisdiction. Then we have Article 12, 
saw before of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, ratified in Nigeria in 1979 and codified as part of our laws in 1983 that prohibits unlawful expulsion of Africans from one country to the other. Yes. And we have the continental counterpart that prohibits as such. It's our position that Mazin Namdi Kano's exit from Kenya was unlawful expulsion that robs this honorable court of jurisdiction. So we are not talking only international law here. There's a misconception that, hey, Ejimako is talking about extraordinary rendition as if it's out of the blues. No, even our constitution prohibits extraordinary rendition. When the constitution said, at section 35 that nobody shall be subject to arbitrary or unlawful arrest. arrest. What does that tell you? It means the constitution says extraordinary rendition even within the domestic territory of Nigeria is unconstitutional and is illegal. So at the, at the arrest of what happened to Nandekan in Kenya was arbitrary and unlawful. These are our positions and they are very, very clear. We have these Nigerian authorities to support all these things and that is why extradition is important and that is why United States, with all her military might, came to Nigeria. They want our top policeman, Abakiari. They didn't take him by force. They approached the Nigerian government. They have the military, everything. But they are approaching our cause to issue an order that is called an extradition order or extradition warrant. So why didn't Nigeria respect Kenya? If Kenya cannot come to Nigeria and grab anybody, and take them back to Kenya Somewhere. and sub subject them to trial. Why should Nigeria be allowed to go to Kenya and uh, grab anybody without authority of law? Okay, sir. Okay, and, uh, sir. Subject them to trial. Sorry, sir. So what, that's our. What that is our. That is our case in chief. What happened in court today? What happened is that I have said it before. We were outside consulting because there was a mild disagreement as the number of lawyers that should be allowed inside the courtroom. So we left our books, we and how outside, and went outside. The judge had not come to put heads together in a civil conference with DSS officers to resolve the issue of how many lawyers that should go inside. Lo and behold, the judge came into the courtroom and ordered that we be locked out. We didn't know this. So somebody told the court, the judge is inside. So we, we broke up and went to the door to go inside the courtroom, but the door was locked. We banged. DSS officers bank, they refused to open the door. The judge proceeded to conduct ex parte hearing. When lawyers are in court, a criminal defendant who was renditioned since June in poor health, she conducted ex parte hearing and adjourned the case on her own motion the 19th and 20th of January next year. The law says this kind of case is day-to-day -day trial. That the maximum number of days or whatever period of adjournment allowed under the law is maximum is two weeks. So why this? We don't think it's fair. Justice should not be done, but it should be seen to have been done. Uh, against well planned evil against Mazina Monokan. And I believe that this is not about just justice. I mean, the judge, this is what happened. This is a plan between DSS because they were out to distract lawyers, to cause problems between, you know, as if there's any issue. How many people will go into courtroom and how many will not go into court? To me, I believe that this is not about lawyer. This is not about uh, DSS and the judge. It has something to do with people that are so much can the politician for South East, it has something to do with with those who say they are fighting for the Afra, but they are in love with Nigeria. Those who say they want regional government, but yet they are POB. Those who say that Mazen Kano is uh, like Oba, that he, he, his time has gone. Those who said that uh, reason of Mazen Kano may not even make any meaning. It will not stop any insecurity. It will not stop any violence, you know, violence and killing going on in our places, like they said which I believe they are the one doing all those things, committing all those crimes, trying to use that against Simon Ekman. At the same time, telling the whole world that Mazen Kano should follow law, obey the law, that they have, he, should, he should face trial. That is all about political solution. When they are talking about political solution, it's not as if people hate political solution. But what is the outcome of that political solution? Do you know what they are going to tell you about political solution of they are talking about? This is a way to lure you to their table so that you will be hell-bent to their will. And it is very clear that politicians from Southeast 
are doing everything necessary to make sure that the the the, the food management can under their control and that's the target that's the reason that's the, that was the reason why they kidnapped in the first place if they notice that there's another person out there doing something that they don't want by keep pushing a blah blah from freedom that's the problem and they thought that those ones that might kind of hand over called and name them ds dos and all that will be the final mad piece of reference they don't know that came and came and cause now what pm is doing is affecting them and they don't like it they have they try to use people inside do you remember when nigerian mainstream media was kind of elevating dos that these people are dos the national media was called carrying that name dos directors directors of state i have i i mean these are what the government told them to do to give glorify them so that people will know that re, respect should be accorded to them and they will go under them and use their where they are you know where their their their, their, their garments and tell you what they want you to hear that was when that was what happened when they're telling you when they, when they were telling you about uh stop sit at home that the DOS have distanced themselves from the Ill illegal sit at home Ill that sitting at home is illegal that we, i'm not the only one that i've seen the news the news were out there people people know what i'm talking about unless if you were just trying to lie to yourself when they were telling you that dos that ipov the real people are uh, they they have they have they have said that they are not part of illegal sit at home then which he asked them which of them is legal sit at home and illegal sit at home people are sitting at home as well they are sitting at home on their own they, 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 when they find out that that one is, that kind of a, a propaganda did not sell out they came back with another motive telling you that you that you are you, you people are causing problem in southeast insecurity all right that he, he's he's a nobody he's, you why most of to people like that that is causing you know yeah creating problem buying people they buy some women they buy some children and photo to, they will take the picture to tell you that this is people forcing people to stay at home i have asked this question if, if people are forcing people to stay at home then why are those people forcing people to stay at home to to, uh, to sit at home did not we're not able to force Nigerian army that we always man roadblock the day of sitting at home we have seen that in the end of, where people military tanks military mount their armored tank on the street of the end of, the same thing happened in uh, Imo state, ha has happened in a boy state, has happened in a number of states. The day of Saturn, you see many people moving around. If actually people are forcing, at, forcing, forcing people to stay at home, they would have attacked those military. That's just a fact. Because it simply means that they are, they are trying to counter your, your order. But being that our people are known for, you know, peace, we are not, that, that is why you have not seen any any different army or armed group operating in an, another mass land like in in a Kogi or no, not not part of Kogi that is Igbo Igbo Kogi because maybe tomorrow you may see different army there because we have Igbo Igbo people in Kogi state and what I'm talking about okay let me say Abuja and Lagos state where definitely we don't have any community there that's visible so that is it and this is not the only reaction that uh, we are going to get from this on our subsequent video we may decide to say something about it but i just want to let you know the feelings and the evil plans that these people are doing is not going to be easy but we shall see how the whole thing will unfold because people are not taking it up for example master uh international attorney the the i think his name is uh something uh of bruce if, I'm, if I, I don't know if i've got the name right i'm going to share share with you the short video that he made which i know is Malcolm shared on his s handle so listen to him okay i'll be right back uh, based upon uh today's meeting that ijifor had with mazi namdi kanu i am his international lawyer and international spokesperson and I will be pursuing all international diplomatic and political platforms uh, to see that justice is done, that fundamental norms of law are complied with. 
Uh, among other institutions I plan to visit, there's an international working group on arbitrary detention that sits in Geneva. It's an arm of the United Nations Human Rights Council. There's the International Court of Justice, the International Criminal Court that entertains accusations of crimes against humanity, uh, violating the Genocide Convention. There's also the United Nations Security Council, which you may recall has established separate courts in instances where it's thought necessary because domestic courts are insufficient to prosecute cases of genocide or crimes against humanity. Most recently, you may recall, the special court established to try Serbian leader Slobodan Milosevic for genocide, amongst other Serbs, relating to the Serbian war. Uh, we will also be approaching the United States Congress, which obviously has an interest in Nigeria. It's the most populous and perhaps the wealthiest country, potentially, in all of Africa. Uh, and it will be of major concern of the Congress of the United States that there be stable rule of law here. Uh, democracy can flourish and that religious tolerance is accepted. You know that recently it was recommended that uh, Nigeria be placed on the highest tier of concern by the International Commission on International Religious Freedom because of the seeming persecution of those of Christian affiliation which includes a large majority of the Afrins. So we intend to pursue all of these legitimate platforms in the international community to make it clear that anything that transpires regarding the Nandi Kanu case will be fully in the sunshine. It will not be clouded. Okay, that is it. That is it. Thank you so much for your time. We are going to close, you know, draw the cutting close now because this is just a quick reaction that I decided to, you know, record for us to know what happened. We are going to stream live, okay? And I want you to join anytime we, we are live. So support us in any way you can and like the video, subscribe if you have not, share the video and let it go viral because we need to let the world know what is going on, how our people are being, you know, maltreated in any way, in any, many ways, all right? And thank you so much and bye-bye for now. Have a wonderful day.